New Mistrianism is a philosophical position that holds that the hard problem of consciousness cannot be solved by humans. In a nutshell, the hard problem of consciousness is the problem of explaining how physical processes in the brain give rise to subjective experiences, such as the feeling of pain or the experience of seeing red. New Mistrianism is a relatively new position. The two main philosophers proposing this concept are American philosopher Thomas Nagel and British philosopher Colin McGinn. Nagel, in his 1974 paper What Is It Like To Be A Bat?, argued that the hard problem of consciousness is irreducible to physical problems. Therefore, it is impossible to solve using the methods of science. The term New Mistrianism was coined by Owen Flanagan in response to McGinn's writings, such as his 1991 book, The Problem of Consciousness. In this book, McGinn argued that the hard problem of consciousness is a genuine mystery that cannot be solved by our current scientific knowledge or methods. He asserts that the human mind is incapable of comprehending itself entirely. He compared the hard problem to the problem of explaining how a computer program can be said to be creative or intelligent. He asserted that these are problems that we may eventually be able to solve, but they are not problems that we can solve right now. The new mysterianism is a form of non-reductive physicalism. Non-reductive physicalism is the view that the mind is a physical phenomenon, but that it cannot be fully explained in terms of physical processes. The new mysterians argue that the hard problem of consciousness is a consequence of the non-reductive nature of the mind. New mysterianism is influenced by a number of other philosophical positions. One is dualism. This is the view that mind and body are two distinct substances. Another is idealism which is the view that reality is ultimately mental. Lastly is panpsychism. This view holds that all things, including inanimate objects, have some degree of consciousness. There are several arguments that have been put forward in support of new mysterianism. One argument is that the hard problem of consciousness is a conceptual problem, not a scientific problem. This means that it cannot be solved by simply gathering more data or developing better scientific theories. The new mysterians argue that our concepts of the mind and the brain are too limited to allow us to solve the hard problem. Another argument for new mysterianism is that the hard problem of consciousness is an epistemic problem. This means that it is a problem of knowledge. The new mysterians argue that we do not have the knowledge or the cognitive abilities necessary to solve the hard problem. Emergence, the phenomenon whereby new properties arise from the interaction of simpler components, is another argument made for this philosophy and, as we will see, to argue against it as well. In the case of consciousness, the new property is subjective experience, which arises from the interaction of physical processes in the brain. However, the relationship between physical processes and subjective experience is not well understood, therefore, it is possible that it is impossible for us to fully understand. The problem of ineffability, meaning that it is impossible to put into words what it is like to have a conscious experience, is another argument made by supporters. They contend that because subjective experiences are private and cannot be shared with others. Finally, the new mysterians argue that the hard problem of consciousness is an ontological problem. This means that it is a problem about the nature of reality. They argue that the hard problem arises from the fact that consciousness is a fundamentally different kind of thing than physical matter. New mysterianism does have substantial criticisms leveled at it though. It has been criticized by some philosophers who argue that it is a form of intellectual laziness, of intellectual surrender. Critics think that this is an unsatisfying and pessimistic view. They contend that while the hard problem of consciousness is simply too difficult to solve right now, it is quite possible that it will be solved in the future with the development of new scientific theories. Other critics of new mysterianism say that it is not a coherent position. They argue that if the hard problem of consciousness is really irreducible to physical problems, then it is impossible to know that it is irreducible. This is because knowledge is a physical process, and if the hard problem of consciousness is irreducible, then it is impossible to know that it is irreducible. Some harsher critics make the argument that it is based on a misunderstanding of, or intentional ignorance of, the nature of science. These critics state that science is not limited to describing physical properties. It can also describe subjective experiences, such as pain. For example, psychology studies subjective experiences such as pain and emotions. Others say that new mysterianism is based on a false dichotomy. The argument assumes that there are only two possibilities. The assumption is that either qualia can be explained in terms of physical properties or they are irreducible and mysterious. 
However, there is a third possibility, that qualia are emergent properties. Emergent properties are properties that arise from the interaction of more basic properties, but they are not reducible to those basic properties. One of the most prominent critics of new mysterianism is Daniel Dennett. Dennett argues that the hard problem of consciousness is not a real problem. He argues that qualia can be explained in terms of physical properties, such as the firing of neurons in the brain. Another critic of new mysterianism is David Chalmers. Chalmers agrees that the hard problem of consciousness is a real problem, but he disagrees that it is unsolvable. He argues that the hard problem can be solved by a combination of physicalism and dualism. In weighing the pros and cons of new mysterianism, we should consider that the hard problem of consciousness is not the only problem that arises in the philosophy of mind. There are other problems, such as the problem of free will and the problem of personal identity. These questions are also difficult to solve. This suggests that the human mind is a complex system that may not be fully understandable. We may find that consciousness is related to other unsolved problems in physics, such as the problem of quantum phenomena. This suggests that consciousness may be a fundamental problem that cannot be solved without a major breakthrough in physics. This is actually close to my personal take on this debate. Finally, it is worth noting that the hard problem of consciousness is not a problem just for philosophers to worry about. Scientists, artists and religious thinkers have all grappled with the mystery of consciousness. This suggests that consciousness is something that is deeply human. As such, it will continue to be a source of fascination and debate for many years to come. Thanks for watching. Please give us a like if you enjoyed this video and feel free to comment to let us know your thoughts on it. Also, check out our other study review videos on other philosophers and philosophies.